Imagine if we went back in time and gave an NFL team a cheat sheet for the draft, telling them exactly who the best players are in the position they are drafting for the first and second rounds, occasionally giving them a little nudge when it comes to free agency and who they shouldn't let go. What would those teams look like now if they were able to always play the draft perfectly? That's what I'm here to try and answer. So this is probably going to be the quickest episode in this entire thing. Let's just get straight into it. At left tackle, Alejandro Villanueva. At left guard, Ramon Foster. At center, Marquis Pouncey. And then at right guard, in 2012, with the 24th overall pick, the Steelers selected David DeCastro, and that was the correct pick. Then in 2011, with the 63rd overall pick, the Steelers selected Marcus Gilbert, and again, that was the correct pick. Also worth mentioning, in 2012, with the 56th overall pick, the Steelers selected Mike Adams, at offensive tackle. And now anybody else available was also pretty bad. You got guys like Bobby Massey, Donald Stevenson. So I'm just calling that all bad, irrelevant. Nobody else would have made the team anyway. We ignore that one. Well, we don't ignore it. We just don't add anyone because of it. Let's move on to the tight ends. We're still kind of waiting for something from Ladarius Green. But in the meantime, of course, Jesse James stepped up and that's it. Moving on to the wide receivers. Antonio Brown, of course, is our number one wide receiver. And then for the number two wide receiver, technically we would put Martavis Bryant there. Of course, he's expected to be reinstated and he's on the team and he's probably the best other wide receiver they've got. However, it's literally impossible for us to do and he's still not technically reinstated anyway, so we'll have to settle for the other guys. So Eli Rogers we'd have in the number two spot and Kobe Hamilton would finish us off. Then in 2013, with the 48th overall pick in the draft, the second running back taken, Le'Veon Bell, which of course was the correct pick. Roosevelt Nix would be our fullback and then of course the quarterback. We got the man Big Ben there. That is the offense. We know it already. Literally nothing changes here. I mean, they made a couple of draft picks here and they were correct but there's nothing to change. I mean, you could really force it and say maybe Marcus Cannon instead of Marcus Gilbert, but that wouldn't be a big enough difference there. Let's move on to the defense. At free safety, we've got Mike Mitchell. Strong safety, Sean Davis. Moving on to the linebackers. In 2015, with the 22nd overall pick, the Steelers selected Bud Dupree, and that was the correct pick. Now, Dupree hasn't had a chance to do too much yet, but in four starts last season, he did get four and a half sacks and there basically wasn't anybody significantly better available anyway. And at the right outside linebacker position, we of course take the ageless wonder. That is of course also down to the fact there's not significantly better options at the position. Although, still, you wouldn't bet against James Harrison. Now, for the middle linebacker position, we finally have something here. With the 17th overall pick in the 2013 draft, the Steelers selected Jarvis Jones. He was an outside linebacker. We're going to slightly cheat there, because otherwise there wouldn't have really been anybody better to take. And Alec Ogletree would have been available instead. Now, of course, he becomes very important, because Lawrence Timmons has left in free agency. And starting alongside him in 2014, with the 15th overall pick, the Steelers selected Ryan Shazier. And that was the correct pick. Plenty of other Good players you could have actually taken, but Ryan Shazier, definitely the correct pick, a very good pick. And that completes that. We can move on to the defensive line. And let's start with the nose tackle. A rookie from last year, Javon Hargrave. Then at left end in 2011, with the 31st overall pick, the Steelers selected Cameron Hayward. That was the correct pick. And then in 2014, with the 46th overall pick at left end, the Steelers selected Stefan Tuit. And that was the correct pick. Then finally, we move on to the cornerback position. And we have another swap. In 2015, with the 56th overall pick, the Steelers selected Senquez Golson, who is yet to play in the NFL. So really, you can just take anybody who's played in the NFL. But Steven Nelson's probably about as good as it gets. So let's fill out the rest of the team now. Our number one cornerback, Artie Burns. Across from him, Ross Cockrell. And then in the nickel position, we have William Gay. And that completes this team. And I said it'd be a quick one. And that's basically because the Steelers... And now I'm not saying this team is perfect and without flaws. But the Steelers, I think, have come as close as we're going to see to a perfect draft. We have literally replaced nobody. Now, you may be thinking I'm an idiot because look, Alec Ogletree and Steven Nelson are on the team. However, the middle linebacker spot, Jarvis Jones has left the team. So we're not replacing anybody that's actually on the team anymore. Steven Nelson, we're only choosing above of Senquez Golson because, well, you know, he hasn't played yet. But that's nothing against the actual player in theory. And the only other position was Mike Adams at tackle, who pretty much probably isn't much worse than anybody else they could have taken. So the only change is Alec Ogletree, where we could have just as easily said keep Lawrence Timmons. We have one single player starting on this team. Obviously, Steven Nelson there down at the number four corner spot that isn't actually a member of this team and wasn't drafted by this team. The Steelers may have actually achieved the perfect draft as close as they could in my criteria, of course. 
But this may just be the closest we'll see to the perfect draft. Pretty much every single position they did as well as they could have done. The thing with the Steelers is as simple as this. Can Big Ben, Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown all be on the field at the same time when it comes around to the playoffs? Because that's really the only thing that stops them going further than they do. Ah!